Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Brankus Creations, and in this video, I'll be demonstrating how to remove the analog board from a Macintosh Color Classic. The Macintosh Color Classic was released in February 1993 and was the first compact Mac with a color screen. It cost 1,400 US dollars for the 4 megabyte, 40 megabyte base model, or 2,495 dollars here in Australia. It was squarely aimed at the educational market, especially those who are currently using Apple IIs. The Color Classic had a processor direct slot and could have an Apple IIe card installed, which meant that users could still take advantage of their existing Apple II software with the hope that they would gradually move across to the Macintosh OS. The Color Classic received quite a bit of criticism at the time, such as this quote from the February 1993 issue of Australian Macworld. A 10 inch color screen is too small for anyone who's even halfway serious about desktop publishing, graphics or multimedia. People were also critical of the modest performance specs, such as the 16 MHz 68030 CPU, the 16 bit bus speed and the 10 MB RAM limit but Apple clearly didn't want the Color Classic to compete with its more powerful and expensive models. Despite these flaws, the Color Classic has become one of the more collectible vintage Macs. This is mainly because of the many modifications that can be made. For example, if you're handy with a soldering iron, you can modify the Color Classic to display 640x480 pixels rather than the original 512x384 pixels. You can also replace the original logic board with that of a Mac LC575, effectively upgrading the Color Classic to a 33MHz 68040. This is known as the Mystic Upgrade. There's also the more ambitious Tacky Upgrade, which involves altering the original case to accept larger slide-in logic boards from some of the later PowerPC Macintoshes. If I've missed any other Color Classic upgrades, please feel free to add them in the comments. Unlike the compact Macs that preceded the Color Classic, there was no need for a Torx driver or case cracker to access the logic board. The rear plastic panel could easily be removed, allowing the logic board to slide out, giving easy access for RAM upgrades, VRAM upgrades, PDS card installation and PRAM battery replacement. Like many other Macs of this vintage, the Color Classic logic board has a number of surface mount electrolytic capacitors, which are very prone to leakage. Unfortunately, the Color Classic also has a number of radial electrolytic capacitors on the analog board that are also very prone to leakage. But unlike the logic board, the analog board is more difficult to remove. In this video, I'll take you through the steps to safely remove it. And here's a quick disclaimer. There are inherent dangers associated with this process, so I can't accept any responsibility if you encounter any issues if you decide to follow these steps. Before we get started, I highly recommend you watch my video on discharging the CRT of a compact Mac. I go through some very important safety precautions which I won't be repeating in this video. So if you haven't seen it, pause this video now and go and watch that video first. It might save your life. So let's continue. The first thing we need to do is shut down the Mac, turn off the power switch and unplug it. Next, we need to remove the back panel and logic board. You may notice that the logic board I have here has already had its capacitors replaced and has also been modified to take a CR2032 3 volt button cell battery instead of the original half AA PRAM battery. Now we need to lay the Mac face down so it's a good idea to place it on a towel to protect the screen and plastic. Many of these old Macs have very brittle plastic, so be super gentle. Next, we need to remove four Torx screws. So you'll need a T15 Torx driver. Unlike the earlier classic models, the screws are quite easily accessible. So there's no need for a long shaft on the Torx driver. Now we can easily remove the back case by lifting it straight up. If you look inside the case, you'll see that the fan is mounted on the back. Now we're going to stand the Mac back up on its feet. Be very careful not to touch the inside of the Mac while lifting it. Here is the checklist of steps we need to follow to remove the analog board. 
Discharge the CRT, remove the anode cap, unhook the ground wire, remove the video board, disconnect the degauss cable, disconnect the yoke cable, disconnect the microphone cable, and disconnect the speaker cable. And this will need to be followed in reverse order for reassembly. So let's discharge the CRT. The Color Classic actually has a bleeder resistor, which means that it automatically discharges the CRT when you switch it off. However, bleeder resistors can fail, so we'll still go through the discharging process as a safety precaution. Once again, if you still haven't seen my video on discharging a CRT, please watch it first. So I'm going to attach the wire of my discharging tool to this ground wire. Then I'll poke the shaft underneath the anode cap until it reaches the metal prongs. Now I'll give one of those prongs a little push to release the anode cap. Next item on the checklist is to unhook the ground wire. Now we need to remove the video board. If your video board has never been removed before, it's likely to have some silicon goo holding it in place. This can easily be cut with a sharp blade. Now hold the video board and gently pull it straight backwards. Extreme caution must be taken during this step as you don't want to break the glass seal on the CRT. Now we need to disconnect the black and white degauss cable. Press the latch on the plug, then lift it. Now we need to unplug the multicolored yoke cable. This just lifts straight up. Next is the microphone cable. Gently hold each side of the plug and pull apart. Finally, we need to disconnect the speaker cable. If the plug isn't accessible, you may need to remove the analog board first to gain access. But if you can reach the plug, disconnect it now. Now, hook your fingers underneath the analog board and use your thumbs to push on the case to begin sliding the analog board out. Keep an eye on all the cables to make sure they don't get caught on anything. You may need to stop once or twice to shift the cables out of harm's way. Pull the analog board out until it stops and then gently lift it up and out. If you're planning to recap the analog board yourself, you'll need to remove the metal shield by lifting these tabs and then sliding it off. If you want to send the board to someone else for recapping, leave the shield on for added protection. You'll find a link in the comments to a list of all the capacitors that should be replaced. You shouldn't need to replace every capacitor, but the guide will show you the ones most prone to failure. If you're having display issues, such as distortion or flickering, chances are it's this 3300 microfarad 16 volt capacitor here. Keep in mind that most 3300 microfarad 16 volt caps are tall and thin, whereas this one is short and fat. Be sure to check the dimensions when you buy a replacement. Once your analog board has been recapped, it's time for reassembly. Make sure the shield is back in place, then gently slide the analog board back into its slot. It will need a firm push at the end to plug the connector at the back of the board back into place. Now we can work our way back through our checklist in reverse. All of the plugs are designed to fit only one way, so there's no danger of connecting a cable backwards. Connect the speaker cable. Connect the microphone cable. Connect the yoke cable. Connect the degauss cable. Very gently slide on the video board. Make sure you're holding it straight and push it gently until it can't go any further. If you want to apply some new silicon sealant to hold it in place, 
feel free to do so. I'm just going to use some of this liquid electrical tape, which remains flexible when dry. Hook the ground wire back in place. Insert the anode cap. You should be able to place one hook into the hole, then push it down gently until the other hook goes in. Now push down the anode cap to make sure it's firmly in place. Now we can lay down the Mac on its face again and gently lower the back case into position. Replace the four torque screws the logic board, and the logic board cover. Lift the Color Classic back up on its feet, connect the keyboard, plug it into mains power, switch it on, and use the power button on the keyboard to start up. I do hope this video was of some assistance, and if it was, please consider pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.